This video is sponsored by Squarespace. The Ambassador class ship was launched in 2332 under the command of Captain Rachel Garrett. The Enterprise NCC 1701C was the third Ambassador class vessel to be built and was commissioned in 2332. The Enterprise C served with great distinction for 12 years before she was destroyed in 2344. At the decisive moment in the battle, a photon torpedo created a rift in the space-time, and the Enterprise was thrown 22 years into the future. During the battle, the Enterprise C took more than 400 casualties and lost her entire senior staff apart from Captain Garrett. The sacrifice of the Enterprise C played an important role in cementing the relationship between the Federation and the Klingon Empire. For a size comparison, let's start with the smaller Enterprise A. It is around 288 meters or 947 feet in length and has a width of 137 meters or 450 feet. The larger Enterprise C is around 526 meters or 1,726 feet in length. She has a width of 320 meters or 1,050 feet. While the Galaxy class Enterprise D is around 621 meters or 2,037 feet in length, with a width of 457 meters or 1,532 feet. When she was launched, the USS Enterprise C was one of the largest ships Starfleet has ever built. At 526 meters, she was three quarters as long as the Constitution class Enterprise. And her deeper engineering hull gave her a significant larger living volume than her immediate predecessor, the Enterprise B. She has 36 decks and a crew of 530. The ship can sustain cruising speed at warp 8.4. The Enterprise C has managed to have similar design language as the Enterprise A, while being a public transition between the Excelsior and the Galaxy class ship that came before and after. Just like its predecessor, it has two separate halls, a primary and secondary with an interconnecting dorsal. On the bottom of the primary hall were three ventral and middle phaser strips, and at the center was the dorsal sensor array. At the front of the secondary hall was a navigational deflector assembly and several escape pods hatch, and located on the neck was the thermal regulator assembly and the docking port for the vessel. Further back was the L-shaped warp nacelle support pylons with the lateral phaser strip on the lower edge of the pylon. The pylon design reflects changes in the advanced Starship design. On later ships, the nacelles would drop in position slightly below the saucer section. Similar to previous design, the ship comes equipped with two warp nacelles and a boost source collector located at the front. The warp nacelles were the most important part of the ship's propulsion system. Inside the nacelles and at the front was the boost source collector assembly, the boost source particle shifter assembly, and the main stage flux tuner assembly. Toward the black were the plasma converters, several warp coils, and the non propulsive field manipulation warp coil. Located at the top of the nacelles were the plasma dump ports and the dorsal photonic spill ports. On the side was the Bussard's dump ports and pre staged intercooler, and at the back was the aft RCS thrusters assemblies. At the aft end of the saucer section was the shuttle bay doors, and right below it was the impulse engine assembly. Toward the back was the landing pad and the shuttle bay doors for the secondary hall. On top and center of the primary hall was the main bridge with the additional five phases and middle strip. One on the front, port, starboard, and two on the aft end. In addition, the ship comes equipped with four RCS thrusters assembly. Before we head over to our cross section of the Enterprise C, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Squarespace. 
Squarespace is an all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. Stand out with a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything, including your product, content you created for your passion project, or just showing your online portfolio. Get started with the best in-class website template and customize it to fit your personal needs. Browse each category of your business to find the perfect starting place. In addition, sell your product on an online store. Whether you sell a physical or digital product, Squarespace has a tool you would need to start selling online. Built-in analytics measure the impact of every sent email. Stand out on any inbox with Squarespace email campaign. Collect email subscribers and convert them into loyal customers. Use analytics for better insight to grow your online business. Improve your website and build a marketing strategy based on your top keywords and most popular product and content. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash half screen to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now back to that animation. Similar to the Constitution class ships, the Ambassador class also inherit many of the design philosophy of its predecessor. It had a shuttle bay at the aft end of the ship, a shuttle bay environmental system, and an aft crew lounge. The Enterprise was designed for deep space exploration and was equipped with an unusually high numbers of shuttlecrafts. At the top of the secondary hall was the slush deuterium tank, shuttlecraft maintenance lift, and the aft torpedo launcher. The warp core ran the height of the secondary hall with the hatch and the underside. The Ambassador class was one of the first stuff designed that could inject its warp core in case of a catastrophic matter-antimatter containment failure. Next to the warp core was the engineering computer core and the navigational deflector emitter and assembly. The Enterprise C secondary hall was also designed with a forward torpedo launcher tube and torpedo launcher mechanism. The Impulse engine also featured a significant upgrade from the previous generation of vessels and the Enterprise C was the most maneuverable ship of all time. At the heart of each engine were nuclear fusion reactors that were powered by deuterium. Located on Deck 4 on the primary hall, Shuttle Bay 1 was a facility dedicated to the shuttlecraft operations. In addition, the ship also has several vertical and horizontal turbo lift shafts that enable personnel and crew to access all decks using the ship's network of shafts. The computer core were at the center of the Starship's computer system. They provided enormous amount of memory and faster than light data processing for essential ship's operations. The computer systems were among the first to use isolinear circuitry, an advanced optical system that replaced the enhanced duotronic circuitry that had been in use on Starships since 2240. As the most Ambassador-class Starship, the main bridge was at the very top and was easily accessible, and at the opposite end was the sensor dome. Close to the main bridge was the conference room, and further down was the enlisted mess. Toward the left of the computer core was the training gym, the brig, and the environmental systems. And on the right was the stellar cartography, the main sick bay, and the transporter room. Because the Enterprise C only appeared in one episode, much of the interior space information were left out. Details regarding the crew and captain's quarters and main engineer were not mentioned on the schematics. But the overall layout and design philosophy was very similar to the Constitution class and the Galaxy class starship. The main bridge of the Enterprise C was located at the very top of the saucer section on Deck 1. All the ship's major systems were controlled from the bridge. In an emergency situation, all bridge function could be rerouted to main engineering. The captain's chair was in the center of the room, immediately behind the operation management and tactical station. 
Several of the consoles were located around the edge of the room on the raised platform with the operators facing the console, which includes the science station, auxiliary systems, and engineering station. The circular room was dominated by the main view screen. Located near the main view screen was the helm and navigation. Behind the bridge were the captain's head and the secondary head for the officers, which was rather unusual to have two separate restrooms on the bridge. The captain's ready room was situated next to the main bridge, which allowed the captain to work in seclusion and hold meetings in private. In addition, the main bridge also comes equipped with two turbo lifts. While the Enterprise C was repaired in the future and made battle ready, unfortunately she was also attacked by the Cleons and Captain Garrett was killed during the battle. The Enterprise C sacrifice did not die in vain. Because of the destruction of the Enterprise C and Captain Garrett's willingness to enter battle with little chance of winning, the Klingons see the sacrifice as honorable, proof that the Federation could be a worthy ally, ushering in a much more peaceful period in history. I hope you enjoyed this brief but unique view and cross-section of the ill-fated historic Enterprise C. Unfortunately, the information I have researched on the Enterprise C only shows the exterior, cross-section, and the deck layout of the bridge. And if you want to see more technical 3D animation of other Starfleet vessels like the Enterprise D, Voyager, or the original Enterprise 1701, check out my playlist on the right hand corner. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.